hello good evening everybody and welcome to everybody for today for our talk and today i have got our esteemed guest uh, mr ajay sahini who is a chartered accountant cpa and uh, he mostly practicing from last 30 plus year in nri client and he cover almost world over he got the client so he is going to be a right person to talk today our nri or pio tax structure in india because being a i myself is nri i also doesn't know so many thing what is the my tax liability in india uh, so first i would like to welcome mr ajay saini for today for our talk i know you are quite busy but you are taking out today time so please uh, first explain me what are the tax structure for nri and pio in india sure good evening all namaskar so basically as uh, mr jain mentioned i am ca ajay sani and uh, i am here just to explain you all people a little bit about the non resident indians nri taxation uh, most of the nri is used across worldwide as on date there are approximately 32 million nri across the world and every month 2.5 million being you know new people uh, shifted and become as nri and you people are doing a lot of hard work uh, what all kind of work and you know even strengthen the nation india and even last year it was approximately 87 billion usd which was inward foreign emittance from all of you people so this is a really great thing so as far as you know uh, i will just stick to my topic only that is taxation Uh, this is concern nra taxation it is not very different as far as residential taxation are concerned there are very few differences are there and they are uh, really very important differences you know how to differentiate uh, first thing is basically most of the nris uh, jain sir should i speak in english or should i speak in hindi or mix what do you suggest so that sorry please speak bilingual hindi also english also that's why right. that's why i'm asking yeah so there are so many you know uh, things in uh, taxation taxation is very you know a, a specific specific thing and you know it comes with the experience and knowledge and every year a lot of changes whether it is you know taxation limits new exemptions deductions additions uh, a lot of things comes and one has to be updated uh, so that you know everything should be as per a legal way that is the most important thing so what i was saying nri is basically uh, when people are abroad they think that uh, you know since we are nri abhi hum non resident indians ho gaye hain to humko hum yahi income kama rahe hain yahi kharch kar rahe hain uh, india se in the sense apart from our country or our relations there aisa kuch taxation nahi lagta hai ya nahi lagna chahiye which is a true to a certain extent like for nri income which is being generated outside is 100% tax free but why you should uh, you know learn and you know you should file your tax return every year even if it is zero taxation this is very important and why it is this because there are certain cases when you know one point of time you need to remit your funds from your nri account to india or from your overseas account to india then it comes in the picture then there is a condition when you know some family partition is there then you know some division is there some uh, money comes and all such stuff inheritance is there and then another thing is basically you know you want to buy some property then again these things in the capture so because of all these things if you have some you know uh, base of in taxation department with you that this is the source of income for example you know uh, in usd i say if you uh, earn uh, 100000 dollar in one year for example i am just saying then you should file your return in india under income tax act 1961 stating under exempted income there will not be any tax but it will go in the government record and in the future after 2 years 3 years and same like when you want to buy some property no question will be asked accordingly and same way if you want to gift to somebody if you want to receive gift somebody so these are the issues so it is very important that your base should be there in the taxation as far as nri is are concerned residents of course there is exemption limit of 250k inr and it is compulsory if it exceeds before that below that this is not required but some people still file even if it is below 
to show that they have earned so much income from this 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 source as you are aware there are various sources and uh, most of the nris i understand most are on the job which is basically outside but some some are doing businesses a lot of activities are also and when they earn they invest in india they invest in you know real estate they invest in uh, mutual funds the share market investments and uh, commercial or residential properties something like that and they 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 they, they have some but somebody has also so many people they have their businesses also here because they are sitting there they import export lot of activities they do so once it is there if you have any source of income here then it which is generated here in india then it is taxable even for nri even if it is below taxable limit you should file that return and show to the government of india that this is my income for example nri interest income this is tax free you show it as exempted income there are nro accounts non resident ordinary accounts you when you left india there are still accounts running of same this account long back 5 year 10 year 20 year still some account may be there amount so even if it negligible interest is there you should disclose it and if it is above you know taxable limit of course you pay the fine there is no problem the tds is there and when you file the return if it is not you can get the refund as such so my point is for all these sources it is very important for nris to be aware why they should file the return and what is there for the uh, for them for as far as taxation is concerned so this is what taxation and sometimes what happened another thing is a double taxation there is a double taxation you know a treaty with various countries most of the countries basically you earn some income here for example rental income you have a property here you are earning rental income here you are a citizen of canada uh, us uh, myanmar uae wherever it is in most of the companies when you are a resident in that company and you are a non resident in india so as per that country's rule worldwide income is taxable it means the comp- income you generated there in usa canada etc and income in india it will be consolidated it will be computed as per taxation laws of local there and then tax will be uh, you know collected from as tds or you know tax withholding all such stuff is second on the other hand if you have income here in india rental income or interest income which you have already you know paying tax for this income in overseas in usa etc then why you should pay for that single income double tax in india as well as usa for that there are double taxation treaties this you can save only by filing your tax returns and if you file your tax returns you can claim that tax credit paying overseas here in india at the time of filing tax return in india so this way this is most important things uh sometimes you know this ha- it, this this runs into uh, five figures six figures also of you know large people large uh, companies i'm talking about basically so it is very important for them so one is base should be there then for double taxation it is there if you want to gift sim somebody it is fine if somebody wants to gift you it is fine but everything has to be through uh, you know routed through banking and digital channel and all the information is with the taxation department these days even you know countries exchange data with one each other so there is no escape patch sir and moreover when you are an nri there is no point no sense of you know not uh, disclosing your income this is my you know humble advice to you that you disclose it it is taxable or not taxable whatever it is it is always better because it will help you in your future for your family for your kids and <clears throat> not only this down the line when you plan to come back to india after 5 year 10 year 20 years then you have a strong base here you can settle it easily so there are various things basically so this is as far as you know, nri and oci is are concerned everything remains same taxation and uh, other thing i explained like dta double taxation which is very important and uh, one thing is basically there is you know a perception in the uh, in the mind of people overseas or even in india india that you know there are problems in income tax filing uh, they 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 create problems there are hurdles uh, they they ask for the money or bribes and everything but i like to you know uh, tell here in front of everybody that these days it is absolutely digital the assessment is faceless nobody knows who is the assessee assessing officer does not know assessee does not know who is your income tax officer and if there is a appeal nobody knows who is the commissioner who is the assistant commissioner you file a return in you know gurugama in haryana 
it will go to Bangalore office for assessment, it will verify it in Mumbai, and it will finalize in Bangalore. So this is a scenario. So this way, it's absolutely neat and clear and, you know, crystal clear system. So okay. you should not worry about this. And if somebody asks you from even a single pie, any penny, this is absolutely wrong. Not even a single PESA, INR, penny is required to do your work in a legal way. Absolutely no. So the tax department is very clear and your assessments are done in a very peaceful and systematic manner and very fast, basically. Yes, sir, but I'm saying basically, if somebody has any questions, queries during my conversation. Yeah, I have my question. I already prepared, which will be the question. <laughs> so my Great, first sir. question or that, uh, when I discuss with some chartered accountant and some says for NRI uh, filing income tax return is by law compulsory or mandatory. And some say it is not mandatory. So first thing I want to know what is the, it is mandatory or it is you file or not file if you file it is good but it is not mandatory what is actual legal situation a good question sir very basic question you have asked fantastic basic rule applies to same nris as well as to india if nris indian income from any sources is you know it's more than exemption limit which is 250k at present then they should file then it is mandatory Okay. Otherwise, it is not compulsory. They should, they may file, they may not file. But as I mentioned earlier, since you people are sitting outside across the globe and earning good, handsome income, you must disclose this as exempted income along with your income, Indian income, whatever it is there. So this is the answer basically. It is mandatory or not mandatory. Okay. Another question is that now we can get a NRI pen number. Hey, what is the difference? Why it's a, like I am a NRI. I have a, my PAN card, which when I was an Indian citizen, not NRI. Should I should I apply for NRI PAN card or no? Why? What is the difference between these two? There is no difference as such. If all the existing NRIs, as you are there for the last 5, 10, 15 years, and you are having already existing, you know, present PAN card, it is absolutely valid. It's not required. Okay. NRI is having a separate uh, division basically to facilitate the NRIs who don't have you know PAN card these days or they have changed the addresses all such stuff for these purposes otherwise yeah. PAN card is only one and it is valid there's no issue okay another thing like suppose I bought a property in just for example in 40 lakh rupee 10 year back and now I, I'm an NRI and I'm going to sold this property just in one crore rupee so I yes. make a 60 lakh profit in that. So what will going to be a tax liability? This is the most, most important and most frequent problems NRIs are facing. It is known as capital gain. As you mentioned, yeah. 10 years back, if it is beyond two years back, it is known as long-term capital gain. And if it's less than two years transaction is there, it is known as short-term capital gain. Okay. As per your question, if you bought it 10, 15 years back, for 40 lakh rupees so we need to first indexation it it is not 40 lakhs is the value at that time so it will okay. be approximately 70 80 as on date okay right one crore is the selling price minus 80 lakh is my indexed cost 20 lakhs the difference is the only capital gain which will be okay. taxed at the rate of 20 percent okay. one thing more here basically when you sell this property in india then mm -hmm. as being NRI and if some buyer is NRI or non or, or resident Indian, he is supposed to deduct TDS, tax deducted at source, at the rate of 20% on sale price, not on difference. Okay. Right. He will deduct 20% means 20 lakhs on one CR deposit okay. in the government in your name. Okay. You sell it, you get 80 lakhs from him on the balance amount. Mm -hmm. And when you file the return, this is important. I was emphasizing every time I again emphasize unless you file the return, you will not get a refund. So you should file your return and say my tax is only on 20 lakhs, not on one CR. So difference will be given to you in your bank directly without any problem. Okay. Uh, next question. If suppose uh, some um, uh, because I collected few questions from my friend already. Oh, so the job. Yeah, so one question is that if suppose someone have not filed five, six, seven year income tax return, previously he yeah. was filing and then he has not filed. 
if suppose he want to file from this year there is any problem the government will ask anything or we can start there is no problem the point is if somebody was doing this filing the tax returns and in between he stopped five six years four years three years whatever because of any reasons mm -hmm. there is no problem he or she can file at least current year he can start it from there Okay. The previous years, if there are transactions are there, heavy transactions, sale, purchase, property, distribution, uh, fund remittances in banks, earlier years for which tax return was not filed. There are other systems, as you know, today artificial intelligence is going on. Everywhere there are systems and computerized. If something comes up from the systems, operative system in the eyes of the government, then they may they may issue a notice to you asking for the expression and clarification for that particular transaction that's it and then you have to explain all the details and all such stuff that's why again i emphasize please file your tax returns okay uh another uh, question which i got uh, like uh, uh, some of mostly nri nowadays uh, currently the share market is not booming but few months back before this ukraine crisis it was booming so they have invested uh, what is the difference between nri account in for in in share market and what what is the difference between resident there is a something different or they are same as far as you know transactions are concerned there is no difference as okay. an nri even you can invest in share market from your nro account no issue okay but okay. there is a you know portfolio investment scheme basically pis which is known as and NRI should basically route through that. That you just ask your bank, they will open your PIS account in your bank account where NRE account is there. You remit the money from NRE account and from here you invest in all the listed companies. Buy per okay. sale, buy, sell, buy, sell. And at the end of the year, it will see the results bottom line, whether it is profit or loss. So there is no difference as such. The only thing is if you do through NRE or portfolio management system, then, then repatriation is okay. It is allowable. When you mm -hmm. do from another account, repatriation of funds are not allowed. Okay. Uh, another question is that suppose, uh, like previously, I was having uh, my bank account in HDFC Bank, and yes. then later I open my NRE and RO account. So they the HDFC Bank call me. Because now you have become an NRI, so from RBI, they are ask, RBI asking either you can be resident or you can be NRI, NRI or NRO. You can't be both. What is that? What is the legality here? Like as a Ravindra Jain, I can have an account only as a resident or uh, I can have a NRI or NRO account or I can't have both. What is the legal situation currently? And if we have both, what is your suggestion? Sure. This is again ignorance of NRIs basically. Because when they were resident here, they were operating that account. When they, you know, flown to overseas countries, be busy there, everything, they don't care. Although there are no transactions in that account. It is a dormant or, you know, inoperative account. But still mm -hmm. account is there. It shows as a resident. The answer to question number one is legal. What is a legal, you know, uh, thing is this? NRE non-resident Indians should not have, they cannot have resident accounts. Whereas as on date, 99% are having an NRE account, resident account, sorry. Mm. But generally, banks are not taking any action as such. It is inoperative. So it is not that. But you know, legal thing is you should have, as Mr. Ravinder, only NRE or NR account. And that same is account as resident should be closed and funds should be transferred to another account. From there on, you can operate the same way. There's no problem. Okay. Another question, like uh, some people say this Aadhaar card needs to link to bank account. So this is necessary or mandatory for NRE or NRO also, or it is not mandatory because some people say NRE or NRO should not have an Aadhaar card. What is the legal issue? No, it's not a question of should. Point is, it is not compulsory. It is not mandatory. Answer is this okay. basically. For okay. NRIs, Aadhaar card is not mandatory. But if they have, it is better. Okay. Like if they file it on, it is better. 
it okay. it comes you know a lot of things you know otp comes it, it it is you know connected it is linked with you know bank account sometimes refund stuck because of this yes so sometimes so i suggest if aadhar is there it is good but it is not compulsory for nris for resident it is compulsory uh another thing nowadays they ask sometimes you we get mail connect your aadhar with your pen card for nre or nro also so this is mandatory or for us for nre not compulsory no, but if this you is are... required unless this pen is... card is you know connected with your uh, you know bank account no transaction will happen how can they manage how can the refund will come how will you pay online banking all such stuff so this is required it is very important when you file the return and you e verify it comes in the picture then only then you can e verify it okay and uh, another thing like uh, you already ask about this share and property and uh, uh, like nri nre which is like mostly you currently you are sitting in dubai in gulf there are a lot yes. of nre is there and they yes. are mostly a middle class and lower class if you go in us and other country they belong from middle and upper class people uh, so uh, for those people have a their in like their family depend totally on the husband income and Correct. family they mostly they are not living with family and so what is the tax liability for them uh, like in uh, gulf or in india or it remains same uh, 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 my question is that this tax liability is nothing to do you are living in which country it is a country That's nothing right. to do okay the only indian income you live anywhere across the world across the globe but if some income is being generated from india that is taxable mm-hmm. in india for nris not okay. overseas and, income okay and like uh, people uh, what i understand that up to 5 lakh income in india f- from nro or n for me like i am an nre nro uh, so if my income is up to 5 lakh then there will be no tax in india that's or there correct. will be tax? that's correct it it, it came but last you year say two, but you no, say 2 lakh like, 250k to... is a you know certain slabs are there basically but government okay. of india has said this thing basically up to 500000 they give a rebate basically of 12500 of tax based on that so again you are right return should return must be filed even if it is no tax because you disclose your income you you are doing so much hard work labor uh, you know blood and sweat everything why not so just file it okay and now another question is coming like this uh, like i am an nri and yeah. my parents live in india suppose yeah. i give them some money uh, so the, in which category it will come for them it is a, as a gift or they it will come for them as a income no it's absolutely not at all income anybody who is living overseas and you know uh, supporting their family and the, he can remit accounts from your nre or nr account to their parents account or they can withdraw it from their nr account for maintenance there is no problem as such absolutely no problem but if it is more than 5 lakh in a year they have to pay tax no 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 it will be if it is giving to you know parents then it will be treated as you treated as a gift basically to the parents okay or suppose uh, your uh, your wife is in india and you live uh, out of india and suppose yeah. you transfer her 20 lakh rupee yes okay so it will come to her income or it will be a gift we need to pay on tax on this or there is no tax as far as gift tax is concerned law says gift to relatives which means your husband wife father brother sister sisters children kids all this category if you give gift of whatever amount it is not taxable but if it is if it is given to non relative if it exceeds 50000 rupees then it is taxable and the receiver is supposed okay. to pay that tax okay so this include like uh, first category family and second category like uh, because i am work in uh, medical tourism business so we have like uh, for transplant we divided family in yep. two category first category means blood relationship your brother yes. sister mother and father second yes. category we says uh, 
wife and her in law means in law they call Absolutely. second category That's so that right. gift can be given to the family means wife and first and second category whatever amount you give it yes. you no need to pay any tax no, on no that no tax applicable there absolutely but oh, you should whoever is getting that gift he she mm -hmm. or she should file a return and show it gift okay. received from so and so this is important because okay, it will so be through banking transactions banking yeah. your channels only if it is a yeah. big amount then some you know a letter a love letter come from the income tax department and they will really hue and cry although there is no issue okay so like suppose you transfer just for um, assumption you transfer yes. 20 lakh rupee to your wife okay yeah. so when we suppose I, I transfer from your account to her account you write down this is a gift or you no need to write down anything or no, it will show in my bank account as debit basically i am paying it so okay. how i am paying i have some source of income which i am declaring yeah. from that okay. only so my end is clear that way now okay. her terms come she will write okay. if something is income is here okay otherwise just exempted income gift received from husband 20 lakh rupees zero tax class that's it okay now i'm coming another like my son live in canada i live yeah. in myanmar yeah. and uh, so what is this huf what is the meaning of huf income the, and how is the tax structure for them Suppose they have an income as a NRE also and resident also. So what is the well, this HUF and how it will be taxable? HUF is a little bit you know different than individual. Most okay. of the NRI cases are 95% are individuals. Very few okay. are HUF or companies or concern or business type. But as far as HUF concern, it goes into the you know corpus of the karta. One karta is there and he is supposed to okay. manage everything like that. It's like that. Okay. But as far as banking is concerned, there's no difference. It will be NR account, NR account, everything remains same. Banking channels, uh, same. There's the same rules are there. Okay. Uh, like uh, this is like we already talked about the parents and and this uh, suppose I have a money in my NRO account. Yes. Okay? I don't have money in NRE and I have money in NRO and I right. want to pay my son fees for Canada, then yes. uh, where, how this will going to be a taxable because NRO income is from India. Okay. Yes. And uh, NRE income, you can transfer easily. No need to ask to RBI, but if it is a NRO, we have to <laughs> it's not like RBI. that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's the question is what I understand is some amount is there in NRO account, NRE account is here, but not sufficient or no amount is there and you need yeah. to send for educational purposes to your son overseas, right? Yes. That's what you asked. Yes. No problem. Yeah. From NR account, you can remit amount to your son or daughter for educational purposes as NRI up to 1 million USD per financial year. Okay. Right? But you yeah. need a CS certificate, which is form 15 CB, which we used to create. And any chartered content will see whether tax compliance is there or not. It means he will see again, I am coming back to that. Returns are filed from where these funds have come. If 20 lakh is there from which, how it is generated. And if it is generated, whether tax is paid or not, then we need to certify that and bank will take hardly a couple of minutes to remit it to your overseas. And uh, how difficult is the, like mostly now return can be filed by me sitting in Myanmar? Yes, yes, online. Yes, yes. Online. Yes, no problem. But okay. there are certain issues you know, on the you know income tax website sometimes, not always. Okay. They have certain restrictions as far as Indian territory is concerned. Right? Okay. Since you are in Myanmar, sometimes it happens, sometimes, not always, that you are not able to you know log in or sometimes not all functions are working. Okay. But yes, you can file from wherever sitting in, across the globe. You can just you know log into your income tax website. Put all your PAN number, data, password, everything. Open it, fill the data, submit it, verify it. That's it. You will get okay. all the acknowledgement. Uh, uh, another question I have. Uh, suppose a NRI has a company in India also where he is a one director and there is a yeah. someone, is a director who is a resident and mm. they make money 
so that uh, the, the uh, and then how it is going to be a uh, taxable or like in uh, like in current country where i am living uh, here if uh, uh, like uh, my i have a two company one is owned by me and my wife is a 100% foreign company another sure. company uh, if a myanmar resident have 65% and i have up to 35 then it will call resident company but yeah. uh, if it is more than 36% for foreigner it become a foreign company for yeah. in this case what is the law in india like uh, in if uh, th how they will going to consider this it is not at all different than resident since a company okay. is there it is listed on the register of companies you know uh, corporate affairs okay. so whatever income is there it is being generated dividend is there it is being taxable as i mentioned it is generated from india irrespective of any equity shareholder any you know director it will be taxable there's no problem as such okay uh so this uh, property you per se thing okay uh, i i have a little bit doubt so suppose i yeah. like we discussed 40 lakh i bought it in 10 mm -hmm. year back right. and i sold in one crore but today right. market price it is the cost is 80 lakh mm -hmm. uh, like uh, current market price so that income profit is only 20 lakh mm -hmm. Uh, so in this, what you say, this uh, whosoever is buying the property, he has to cut, deduct 20% TDS. Yes, on uh, the sales price, on the agreement, what you made. Okay, so suppose it's an agreement of 1 crore, so he will uh, pay me only 80 lakh. 20 lakh, right. he, will, he will deduct the TDS and, and he deposit, deposit treasury. To treasury. Right. So then again, I need to file enter return and then need to tell to the government my profit is only 20 lakh and Correct. this is the tax. So suppose right. tax is 20 percent. So you take lakh, for example. 4 yeah. lakh and 16 yeah. lakh they will return to us. That along is the law. Interest, sir. Along with interest, they will refund it to you. Okay, okay. Oh, that's great. Yes, so and it, it, it is very fast system. Again, I repeating, no issues. Just do your work honestly, give all the information, disclosures and relax. No problem. Okay. Now we have a lot of question and I think we oh, have. Great. I'll be happy to answer. And uh, one thing now I want to ask about your uh, services, what your NRI resident dot in is providing to our viewers, how they can contact you. So it will be beneficial for them. So for any any you know taxation related issues or uh, other like for example i have not mentioned that nri loans somebody wants you know uh, get want some loan for business purposes personal purposes home property this is another area where we can help so as you mentioned they can visit our website www.nonresidents.in or uh, they can you know contact me on my mobile number on whatsapp plus nine one nine eight triple nine three seven triple nine you can circulate it and uh, they can yeah. write a mail, WhatsApp message, whatever it is, their query, their problem, and I am there to help them. There's no problem. Okay. Uh, so I think now be a mic of mostly question you have already answered. Uh, <laughs> so, and uh, you have a that means so thorough knowledge. Eh? I ask question fraction of second, you have an answer of that. That's no, a great sorry. thing. It's, it's basically practical. It's not, you know, why we, we have to update ourselves. That's it, basically. Otherwise, we, we are daily doing this lot of NRI. Yeah. For example, NRI is sitting in America, in California, San Jose. One family is there from the last 30 years. Yeah. Here, their distribution of property is going to be here. They don't want to come 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 It is very difficult for them. Number yeah. two. They have no contacts here. Unko ek CA chahiye, and secondly, it is financial information, which is confidential information. Yes. Maybe confidential information kisi ko tabhi share karta hai if he has some confidence in that person. Yes. Here our role comes basically. Yeah. We can help sitting here in India, whatever their problem is, taxation, loans, property, buying, selling, capital gains, share market, tax returns, refunds, remittance of money. NRO to NRO, NRE, NRE to your overseas account, all such stuff, certifications, we can help that way basically. And we have, you know, clients across the globe for the last so many years. There is no issue. 
but as far as you mentioned your knowledge wise it's like uh, you ask questions so many people even nobody is perfect we have to learn every day we have to learn every day what is new in tax what is the new budget is there what are the tax lab something new deduction are is there or some deduction is you know removed so like this then we also provide you know tax planning in a legal way how you can save tax in a legal way maximum tax how you can save this is thing like i come to your uh, query of you know capital gain of this 80 20 tax and this thing if from that profit of you know 20 lakh rupees if you buy some property a new property residential property in a year or so there will not be any tax oh very good this is another thing so a lot of activities are there like you know if you invest in uh, government bonds so there are ways and outs but everything should be in a legal way it should be transparent uh, whatever somebody is trying to be active more active more smart one fine day if he gets you know two by four notice from government income tax department then he will run from you know here and there and then it will be difficult for him so i will suggest yeah. Everybody, you disclose your income. It is not taxable. There is no harm. What is the problem? You disclose it. It will help you in future for inheritance, for giving gifts to your family, for uh, some investments, for start some business here in India. When you come back India after 15, 20, 30 years, you need some accommodation. You need some business. You need some, you know, source of income. All these things. It, it will help you at that. Get it. So. Uh... Thank you, Mr. Ajay, for taking out your time. We almost completed 40 minutes and we have a very interactive and very useful conversation with today with you. And after one or two weeks, I will connect again connect with you because I don't want to mix up taxation with the investment. Sure. So in next time, so we nice will discuss, yeah, next time we will discuss about the investment uh, uh, possibilities for in nri in india like yesterday i send you that uh, i was having a talk with gaurav pradhan uh, who is yes. a very well known data scientist he told and mostly people even in myanmar and anywhere where whenever i talk to people uh, mostly people are very bullish currently on india i think this is the only country where people are thinking they have a good future because uh, that's not you and me is telling that number is showing because we are the only country, big uh, country, which is currently is growing by the GDP. In actual term, we are in a growth. If we minus the GDP growth and minus inflation, still we are in positive growth. Otherwise, mostly country, if you minus GDP minus inflation, they are in negative. So thank you very much, Mr. Ajay, for thank taking you, out your time thank and you, answering this lot of questions. Thank you. thank you very much. And thank See you, everybody, you for much. watching. Yeah, thank okay, you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye bye. Jai. Thank you.